put up a disclaimer first, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this, this is just you. <laughs> is the most unrealistic superhero that you could possibly create. Hey, everybody. It's your favorite problematic podcaster here, along with CC the Geek, hashtag CC's Feet. Wow. We have, <laughs> we have Sam over here, a.k.a. Plantain Poppy, a.k.a. Mr. Salty. Shut up. <laughs> And we have our comic book connoisseur, Rio Griffin over here. Captain Rio. Yeah, Captain Rio, Captain Comic, whatever you want to call him. We do know he is in the military. And we have a very special I'm guest not. today. A very special guest, Jason Torres. All right, somebody, somebody cue the... <sighs> and the crowd goes wild. Right. Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to do anything, you know, <laughs> obviously now, you know, yes. like yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. It's one of my favorite things to do is just chill and, and hang out with black people who like to, you know, talk about something other than Trump for a few minutes. Yay. Hello. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the show. So I guess we'll, we'll jump right in and talk about all the wonderful things like who is Jason Torres yeah tell us a little bit about yourself yeah like in the entertainment industry you're pretty you're very well known but like you know not necessarily like you're just now kind of becoming more of a household name so to speak um but talk about all the very iconic shows and networks that you have worked for and um all the various projects that you have done in the entertainment industry in general, and then, um, you know, any like geek stuff that you're doing too. All right, um, I, that's a, an amazing intro. I really appreciate that. I don't think I'm anywhere near being a household name, even even in my own household. So I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> but um, I, um, you know, um, I, I, I work in media and mostly as like a writer, producer, more recently, I've, I've been directing, but I had kind of like a unique trajectory. I, I started in journalism um, where I, uh, in Baltimore, writing for the Baltimore City Paper. Um, actually, before that, um, I worked at The Source. Do you guys remember The Source magazine? Wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Dude, I, I used to buy copies of that all the time, collecting those. I still have them. I got a bunch in my attic too. That and like Double um, XL and Vibe and all that. So yeah. right, right out of college, I got an internship there. And um, after that, I, I ended up doing some work for the Baltimore City Paper back when that was a thing. Shout out to them. I learned a lot there. I used to cover like uh, the local music scene and sort of like local politics, like what's happening with like local delegates, stuff like that. Um, uh, and also like the school system and the hip hop scene and, and, and stuff like that. And that, that uh, led me in, into an opportunity to write a pilot for BET just from like a friend of a friend. They were like, hey, I know you're a dope writer, but you don't have TV experience. Um, would you want to help us write this pilot? It was a very small pilot and um, did it, didn't, didn't work out. Um, didn't do any more television or media work at all for like seven years beyond just like writing for the city paper. I had resigned to just be like a, a newspaper reporter and I did that. And then out of nowhere, somebody found that old um, pilot and hit me up and was like, uh, would you want to do another one? Did that and that, that led to me writing for 106 in Park. And then once I got in the building, I made sort of lateral moves to VH1 and MTV, just from like networking and being in the building, I, I ended up writing for like the Charlemagne show and that was on. Hey, MTV. that's my guy. I love, I love Charlemagne the guy. Yeah, he's great. Um, I ended up writing for that show and then like a couple other specials and awards specials and uh, BT awards and, and shit like that. And then um, ended up uh, finding myself like in development at uh, working at True TV. I'm skipping a lot of stuff, but these are the major highlights. Um, and then, uh, fr from there, I ended up, uh, going to like Fuse and mostly like the music pop culture type of like content. I, I started getting known around New York for that. And then I ended up working at, uh, I ended up writing and producing on Jesus and Mero when they were at Vice. Oh, oh, oh more of my yeah. people. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, that was really dope when they, when they pulled the plug on that and up and went to, uh, 
Showtime. Uh, Showtime. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. W- when they bounced to Showtime, I ended up. Um, what did I end up doing? Like, why well, I ended up going to like Michael Moore was doing a pilot, and we were gonna do that, but then it kind of fell apart because his movie, because the movie that he was doing was supposed to coincide with the show, but the movie kind of flopped. It was a whole weird thing. Mm. And then I, I ended up back at uh, Vice working on some like ridiculous show that they did. But now I'm at Complex where it's sort of like a culmination of like everything that I've been doing. It, it's the lane that I've been in the longest in terms of like pop culture, hip hop, uh, you know, sneakers, comedy. And so now I, I work as the associate director of development, which means that like helping come up with like new ideas and new shows. It's a different beast because it's not necessarily television, but I do sometimes have a hand in things that we produce and develop that end up being sold to like Hulu or Netflix and shit like that. It's a weird, complicated world because it's not like TV, like what's a success in television isn't really what's a success in like digital because you could just throw something on YouTube and it's a hit and it's not as expensive. So I don't know, it's it's a whole thing, but it's a it's a it's a good place to be. It's a good company. Um, I'm, I've been there. I think uh, two weeks ago made a year there for me, and um, yeah, that's uh, that's sort of like the the cliff notes to like my my journey so far. Wow! So you were there post Joe Button. So you didn't get to be there for all the <laughs> all the mess that was going on. Nah, but I heard I heard horror stories, man. Like I, yeah. I, heard, I heard a lot of crazy stories about it. And um, you know, it's weird. One of the challenges is trying to like capture that lightning in a bottle again because like I don't think anyone would have predicted that he'd be so successful in that space. But like at his leaving that that had an impact. So Right. there's been times where I've been you know we've had we've had to have conversations about how do we recapture that and it's like it just really goes to show you that the power is in the uh the, the creators you know what I mean like yes. these, even with Jesus and Mero, like they were in a situation where they felt like Vice wasn't treating them right so yeah. they went out and let themselves get courted by other people and they said there's a bigger bag over here so I'm out like there's if when, when you perfect your craft and when you resonate with the people and this goes for Button this goes for um, these is Meryl. It goes for Charlemagne too. Like I, I've been fortunate to work with people who have big, big personalities and end up being like established enough to make sure that they their brand moves with them. That they can't just be replaced. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, they are the show. And um, you know, and, and honestly, like one one of the reasons why I've been able to get su- successful is 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 because. Uh, it's not easy to work with people like that. You got to let them do their thing, but then also sort of like corral them into a certain. Try to lane. guide them a little bit. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. So it's like, um, it's definitely, a, it's, it's a skill that I sort of like I accidentally developed. I never, I never made it a goal to like, oh, I want to work with people with big, big voices and big personalities. And it's just something that ended up happening. And it's, it's been a, a fun ride. Right. <laughs> So I'm sorry. Somebody have, was somebody gonna say something? Oh, um, okay. Yeah. I, w- I was oh, go gonna ahead, go say. Um, so it's funny because like uh, your history and your catalog of of uh, companies that you've been associated with are all like super relevant companies throughout like the past decade. Mm-hmm. So it's like you jumped from one relevancy to the next relevancy. How did you know? where to move and like when to move in order to stay with a company that was going to be the next hot thing right that's a good question you know what's funny you know what i thought you were going to say you were like yo you've worked for a lot of like relevant places how come i never heard of you or something like that like that's what that's where i thought you were going with that but no uh, no no no, no. (laughs) that would be our next question (laughs) yeah no seriously well i like to maintain a little profile but to answer your other question a lot i i just never um I make sure I'm always doing my homework and my research and like um, seeing like what's out there. Like, you know, I was, I was reading about and thinking about Quibi like way before they launched, you know what I mean? Anything that seems like it's going to be the next big thing. It's like any other business, you got to put your 10,000 hours in. It's not enough just to like, you know, write or edit or produce. Like I have to know what's happening in the industry. I have to kind of predict and guess. And I've believe me, I've guessed wrong a bunch of times. Like, I've definitely been on projects where, or more than once, I've had projects lined up in front of me where it's like, all right, I could do this or that, and which is a blessing, but there's been more than one time where I picked a project and then it tanks or the, 
you know, it gets canceled after a few weeks and then the other thing is flourishing. And it's like, damn it, that show's wrong. But you just keep it moving. You learn, you, you, you grow. And as far as like, um, you know, it, it, it really has been like a lot of luck. Um, but, but also like research really. Yeah. Okay. And I think that what you kind of hot, well, first of all, let me just say that 106 in park in particular for me, as much as I love vice, and fuse and all those other things 106 and park was like a super intricate part of like growing up <laughs> i can't yeah even, because i mean you had trl you know what i'm saying but it's like when you see that meme and it's like the hbcu versus the the mainstream and like the plates of food you know what i'm saying like that was 106 and park versus trl and i appreciated trl for what it was but 106 and Park really gave us that space where, um, you know, there were th issues and things that were like commonplace that just didn't happen on TRL and other spaces. So I um, just wanted to say how much I appreciate that for one. And then two, um, I think that it's so important how you highlighted that you've had failures along the way, so to speak, or you've had lessons that you've learned where the outcome wasn't ideal but you didn't let that stop you from doing, per, from pursuing your passion, basically. Um, and yeah, I just thought that that was important to like name that. Yeah, for real. I tell everybody too, like, I can't stop. Like I, I it's, and I, I, I've gone, I've gone too far. Like I, when I was at 106 in Park, it was like 2010, 11. Like that show was already well-established. It was kind of even like on its way out, but, but what kept it, like cool and what what people loved about it was still there which was like everybody was on a very long leash we'd have these big meetings at the beginning of the week and they would just give us a list of like who's available like yo uh this rapper's coming in that rapper's coming in and i had full reign to be like yo you know it'd be dope what if when this guy came in we played a game with him where this this and that happened or what if we did like a funny cold open or sketch and they'd just be like yeah fine do it like it was it, it so I owe a lot to that space because it gave me like the confidence to speak up and brainstorm meetings, which is not easy, especially mm. when, you, when you're in there and everyone's looking at you and, and you got you know, you stick your hand up and if you have some dud of an idea, it's like, it's not always the most comfortable situation. So right. um, like, so, so a place where it's like, it's a room full of black and brown people who are mm. saying like, yo, like, give us your best shot. Like we, Eddie Murphy's coming in tomorrow or two chains is coming in. What you got? Mm -hmm. And like, it's your, it's like, you just got to kind of go for it. Plus the other thing is like, I live in Baltimore. My family's in Baltimore. So right. to even take the job, I had to move to New York and stay on my uncle's couch. So it was like, oh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I got to go for it. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like I can't be timid with it or. Oh yeah. You know, Once started. an opportunity like that pops up, you need to take it, take yeah. it immediately. But also I'm like, I'm on the couch. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work here. I'm going to stay after everybody leaves. I'm going to write, I'm going to research and then I'm going to go home at you know 11 o'clock after my uncle's asleep so i don't feel like talking to him and yeah. so they just crash right into the onto the couch because like you know that that's all like part of it just yeah. just grinding yeah. My, yeah. my whole family's from new york though so it wasn't that crazy and i would come <laughs> home i would come home every friday but still it's like you know right. Right. yeah so you oh i'm sorry rio no i was just gonna i was just gonna uh, add on to that just saying you had a different motivation you had a uh you, you had a different ambition than the other people who were basically more, uh, it was more convenient for them to be in that place. Yeah, like I didn't major in communications. Like I actually, I, I went to Morgan and I majored in um, English, but my concentration was writing for television, which was brand new at the time. Mm. And um, I ended up getting my, my internship before, like before uh, the end of my junior year. So I just, I was like, I'm just going to go for it and stay in this lane. So like, not even like any real formal training. Like the only formal training I got was like being at the city paper. Um, but, by, but I'd already, you know, I wrote for the school paper and I, that, and I was already at the source by then. So it wasn't that crazy, but it was all, all of it was like on the job training and just like winging it really. Right. That's what's up. And I'm so glad that you asked that where you had that insight real because um, that kind of alludes to the next question that I was going to ask, which is, um, you. so you did mention that you went to Morgan, which is a HBCU in the state of Maryland. Sam and I are both uh, graduates from Bowie State University, which is another Maryland HBCU. Um, 
So talk about, cause you know, I know that in our conversations together and um, discussing like HBCUCon and the importance of that space, um, you have talked a lot about how your, your HBCU experience at Morgan has, you know, how has that helped shape you and, um, you know, given you the tools in your personal and professional life to like, you know, be that dude. <laughs> Going to Morgan was amazing. It was the best thing I ever did. I was not a good student in high school, and I'll keep it real. Like, black people in New York are totally different than black people. Any even like ten minutes south south of New York, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, it's a whole you know, it's a whole different world. Like, I, I it's completely different. My only my only uh, uh, insight into an HBCU at the time was like a different world and school days. I'd never been to one. I, I, didn't, I hadn't even take, taken a, a tour. I was a really bad student. I was either going to work or go to the military. My dad was in the army. Hey, and Rio was in the military. He was yeah. No. Yes, he was. It's a, that's a running joke. It's not true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's I, true. I work for the military. Oh, okay, okay. As a civilian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. A contract killer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's not denying it. He just shook his head. Stop it now, please. Okay. No, you, buried, you buried the lead, yo. Like, that's what, that, who am I talking to again? I should have <laughs> right. Googled y'all first. Yeah, you definitely need to Google Rio. <laughs> Captain Griffin. Oh, shit. We, what were we talking about? <laughs> so HBCUs. So, um, so yeah, um, so I, I, you know, I applied to Morgan, got in, came down here. It was a complete culture shock. Like I remember even the first time I went to a McDonald's and even hearing like Baltimore accent. I was like, what? Like water? Yeah, I was like, how far? Maryland. Yeah, water. Doug. Somebody said Doug instead of dog. <laughs> Doug. Doug. I never heard. I never that heard that one. You yeah, never heard that? Doug? Nah, I live in D. I used to live in DC, man. I don't know hear that bullshit. That's how they say dog. They say Doug. They say yeah. Doug. Yeah, DC and Baltimore are very different, though. That's so, stupid. like, so like, Doug from Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah that's how they say dog. Mm. But that's the crazy thing about DC and Baltimore is like we're only an hour apart, and the culture is so different. But. Completely different. They love yeah. those giant white tees. What's up with that? Only thing that brings <laughs> us together is only thing that unites us is Old Bay and chicken wings. That's the only true. But anyway, so you oh. were. Morgan and it was a culture shock. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. I ended up um I, I ended up but I ended up playing in the marching band. Um, oh. which was hey, cool. my cousin did that too. Was my shit. Well, what's your cousin play? I forgot what the hell she played. I'm not gonna lie to you. What did you sorry. Play? Sorry, Liz. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you did, but <laughs> you were there. Wow. What did you play though, Jason? I played the drums. What? Uh, you was on a drum line? Yeah. Hey. No wonder you die by this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. That was that was a that was weird too. So yeah, I did the I did the drumline thing. Yeah. Um I, I I dove headfirst into the whole HBCU experience. Like I it was it was pretty it was pretty crazy. Um but I, I, I loved it. And what I loved most is like especially in retrospect, as I can like grow and look back and appreciate the experience, I kind of liked the security uh of um being around people like me, you know, and and uh, like it's the same. It's the same thing. Like we can all kind of relate to when when you go to like your first Comic Con or when you go to um, when you go to like a comic book store for the first time and you feel like you're in like that uh, that cocoon. You know what I mean? Like it feels mm -hmm. like a, a, a safe place. Like I remember when I discovered like my local comic book store and being like, oh shit, this is like not just some. You know, you usually I don't know about y'all, but when you you coming up, it's like there's a chance that if somebody finds your comic books, it could be embarrassing. You know what I mean? Like if the if the wrong person in your class or or whatever, you know, it's kind of a dorky thing. It wasn't super cool like in in you know way right. back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, nah, it was the same thing for me. I only got away with it because of you know my my brother was the cool one. So me doing geeky shit, I got to pass. So right. yeah, so 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 yeah, so it's like all all day long, it's just me and like four other dorks who are way into <laughs> comic books. And then like after school, the four of us would go to the comic book store, and it was like, all right, we can kind of chill now. Like 
they, we're not even the dorkiest motherfuckers in here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like let alone the dorkiest in the school. Right. So, um, um, yeah, it was that's kind of that same thing where it's like, I'm around my people, you know what I mean? And like, um, you know, for better or worse, not like I enjoy being sheltered or anything, but like, it's just more, it's just comfortable and easier to breathe when, when you're around people that, that you know like you and are feeling you. Well, not even that, not even that. It's more about, it's not even about being sheltered, but when you're in a space where you feel at least reasonably safe, it allows you the headspace and the freedom to create and to like be your best self because you're not in like defense mode, <laughs> you know, and yeah, you're, you're not always looking over your shoulder. Exactly. And, right. And you're able to like bounce ideas off of people who think like you or have common interests with you. Um, you know, and that was ultimately why I created HBCU con shameless plug was because HBCUs and the con spaces were like the two spaces where I felt like I could be myself. Um, so I feel you on that. Yeah, and that was why when we, like, jumping into how we met, I saw you at Baltimore Comic-Con, mm -hmm. and you had, like, a booth set up, and I saw, I saw the, the uh, like, the signage first and one of the flyers, and I was like, I, it was one of those, I, and I'm sure we've all had this, like, one of those, why, why didn't I think of that idea, you know what I mean, like, like moments. Mm -hmm. Like, I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God, this makes perfect sense, yo, like, combining two um not really niche but like you know combining two subcultures in a way um do you think it's fair to call hbc's a subculture i feel like it kind of is yeah yeah so so com combining those two things mm -hmm. i was like yo that is absolutely perfect which is why like immediately i was like i want to be a part of this i'll do a panel like whatever you want like i'll i'll pull up this this sounds dope so Yay. And we appreciate you. <laughs> no, could you imagine? And then all this happens? Like, I was, that's, yeah, whatever. I know you know, but. Yeah, I know. I'm, it is what it is. But we're looking forward to it. And, we, you know, Ego Podcast is, of course, happy to be a part of it as well. But I don't know if any of you all have. I really just had one other question. Um, and speaking about cons. And then I'll let you all pretty much take it away if, if you have any more questions for um, Jason. And then we can move to our discussion. Um, but the last question I was going to ask was um, that you've now, you know, of course, begun incorporating um, con culture, like your media projects, like when you um, working for Vice. I saw that you did um, some stuff at the Black Comic Fest. You did cover the Black Comic Fest column. Um, so like kind of talk about your interest in the community, you know, outside of like HBCU con and talk about how you plan to like expand your role in that and like your expertise in that. Yeah, well, I like to, I feel like what I've learned is like make, making stuff that you think people are going to like doesn't always work and that like making stuff that's authentic to you works. So like the things that I find, the things that I enjoy that I find funny, I, I try to lean into that. And so, um, yeah, I, I did this thing with Zach Fox where we went to the the New York, uh, you know, it was a black comic book uh, festival. And just to kind of show that, that it exists really, because I don't feel like you see it a lot. Like, I know people know that black people like comic books, but it's like to see like an all black, comic book festival and to just show that side of uh blackness that i feel like you know we're, we're not always allowed to show i kind of feel like white people own sort of they don't own the geek space but they it's it's what you see the most of you know like when there's a comic book movie that comes out and there's a black character it's always like you know oh you know <laughs> people sometimes lose their shit if like someone gets recast right it's like like we don't belong War machine. In space. <sighs> yeah like like we don't belong in that space or like we don't have the luxury to like fantasize about shit or have fun it's like and, and that's that is kind of the way it is because like i i know that like um just from growing up in in all of it that like it is kind of like it's looked at differently you know what i mean it's, it's like it's hip-hop it's sports when you little you know you pick one of those things it's not really a viable career option you know it's either like music whether it's hip-hop or an instrument right um you know um 
sports and, and shit like that. But um, yeah, so I like, I like to incorporate it. And I've done stuff with like wrestling. I'm, I love wrestling. I know this is like a, that, that's like one of my favorite, like geek out things to do. Like I, I you know, um, <laughs> one of my favorite, like, you know, guilt, I wouldn't even call it a guilty pleasure. Like I straight up love it, but like, you know, wrestling, comic books, um, even like I, I'm trying to, I'm working now on, on before the world closed, I was working on putting together like a docu-series about um, people who make um, sort of like bootleg action figures, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh. And um, there's a lot of people that do cool shit with like taking like old molds of like, uh, you know, Star Wars figures uh, or like Masters of the Universe figures, sort of re- remaking them, remixing them, putting together the packaging, the cardboard, the plastic, you know what I mean? It's a, it's an yeah. interesting subculture. And, but what gets the recognition though, is like a cause, right? Like, like KAWS, he sells his pieces that look like a Lego, uh, a Lego figure with like a bear forehead. I'm sure you've seen it if you Google cause. Um, and like, um, those things sell for like thousands, you know, tens of thousands of, of dollars. And like, um, there's black people in that space though. You know what I mean? Because like we grew up, you know, if you're certainly, we grew up with GI Joe and Transformers and shit too. And it's like, why wouldn't we be able to celebrate the nostalgia of that? And right. like the, the workmanship and the artistry that goes into that. It's not like, it doesn't just have to stop at like either graffiti or like fine art. You know what I mean? It could be, it runs the whole spectrum. Right. And, and um, just shit like that that I'm trying to bring. I'm work. I'm working on a bl- on a black. Uh, right now I'm working on a black, um, show about wrestling, where it's basically like kind of like uh, um, first take, you know, two black dudes sitting talking talking about the world of wrestling in like a smart, um, you know, insightful way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like you know, bl- uh, black action figure creators, uh, black uh, people talking about wrestling. Um, you know, just trying to trying to do my part with with where where I'm at to make sure that when I'm in those meetings I get I'm raising my hand and being like yo there's really cool black men and women doing fly shit in these spaces that you wouldn't really think about mm-hmm. and like you know sometimes it's it's up to them to to buy into it and then other times I have to like you know make it happen on my own but you know it is what it is right and I think that that's so important cuz you talk well for one you know you talked about how um, black nerds are heavy consumers in this industry. And, um, I mean, look at Black Panther. It made a billion dollars. Like, that's all you have to say, <laughs> for real. All those um, movies. Every movie I've seen, the theater been packed with black people. Right. And every it, time. Right. Which, le- which leads to the next thing, which is, like, representation, which is also extremely important and a key component. But a huge part of it that people overlook is ownership. You know, because, you know, Marvel made that billion dollars. You know what I mean? We didn't make that billion dollars. So it's like having, it's so important to have spaces, you know, and um, and Black creators, like you said, doing their own thing and having their own, um, you know, we do this for the love of it. Like we would do this for free if we, um, you know, but at the end of the day, we all got bills to pay. So, you know, as much money as we invest in fueling this market, we should be getting our piece of the pie as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's, we're not getting it because like, we're so far behind, like just, just even being recognized. Like even when you think about like, even the sto- the a lot of the mainstream stories being told, right? Like when you look at what you have out now, um, where it's like the, the biggest representation obviously is Black Panther, it's um, you know to a lesser extent black lightning like the blackness has to is part of the entire identity of the project like right. it could it could very easily be called something else and tell a story about a person who has a journey and has a powers and an enemy but like they it's like they they it's it's so it's so much in its infancy on like a on on like a a big scale uh, as, as far as like mainstream. That like we're still we're still at the point where it's like we have to identify th- these uh, characters like by their blackness. You know what I'm saying? Which is right. Like, kind of yeah. Weird. That's what made uh, Spawn a unique character. Yeah, and Static yeah. Shock. 
because you yeah. didn't use the word black in it. <laughs> right. But see, and the thing with Spawn is, is you really don't know that he's a black character until you get his origin story. Right. Yeah, I was cool. I didn't know you know there were there are people who like d- to for years followed the you know fandom and didn't know that the main character was black and so, like you said. right so another thing that i wanted to ask you about was uh earlier on in the conversation you were talking about um how being a, a nerd or a geek or a blurred however you want to refer to, refer to it uh was kind of it was almost something that you kind of had to like be low key about, right? So, but in today's world, I fi- my personal opinion, it almost feels like if somebody doesn't know like who the Avengers are or doesn't know who like Tony Stark is, they're like the person who's like, what the fuck have you been doing? You know what I mean? Like, what, what movies have you been watching? And like The Handmaiden's Tale or something? Like, how do you not know about the hottest stuff that's out right now? Um. Are you asking like how I feel about that? Yeah, yeah. So do you feel it's, like I have like, two kind, thoughts? It, it's kind I was of about flipped. to say, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no, you're right. It's it's ill because like it's it's two different things happening, mm-hmm. right? Like on one hand, it's like, um, it's like it's way too easy to to be a nerd now. Like I was a nerd for real. Like where, where right. the, the the cool kids were taking my comic books and playing keep keep away. Like and and you couldn't just um there was no con at the time it was hard i remember i used to have to walk a couple blocks to my comic book store and it was like kind of a dusty dark place to get the books that i wanted to read if you got lucky maybe you could find some on a newsstand but they, they'd be all bent and fucked up so it took effort right to get what you wanted and if you and if you found yourself in a story that was dope to get the back issues was a whole pain in the ass so now it's like it's so easy now that like I kind of resent when someone says like oh yeah I'm such a nerd oh, I love that nerd shit it's like shut up you don't you you just like that's it's pop culture now right and that's yeah. that's like the other side of what you were saying is that like when somebody doesn't know if someone doesn't know what the Avengers are it's to me it's sort of like the people who don't watch like Game of Thrones where they go like oh I don't watch Game of Thrones which is kind of annoying because like everyone knows what all these things are but the I don't watch the Avengers. It's just like the modern equivalent to like, I don't have a TV. You know, people say, yeah, oh, I don't have yeah, a TV. Exactly. It's like, oh, you're so fucking evolved. Look at you with no TV. It's like, come on. Yeah. You know what the Avengers are. I'm vegan. I don't, you know. It's yeah. Like- you know, <laughs> even, if you, if, even, if you, even if you drive by, if it's just a lie, there's a poster for it. You yeah. know, at the bus stop, there's commercials for it. In yeah, every, you can't, you in can't every media. It. Yeah, even if you right. don't watch TV, it's, a, it's, it's everywhere. But it's yeah. YouTube. Can't can't fight it. One thing too, because like there's a difference between the person who's like vegan, for example, and they're just living their life being vegan, versus somebody who's like trying to assert their like whatever lifestyle it is, and like, oh, I'm so disgruntled about this one thing because everybody else loves it, and let me make sure I ruin your day by letting you know that. Um, It's called hating. It's called being a hater. So, but then there's like, so there's this fine line in the geek community where it's like you're trying to discern gatekeeping from um, exploitation, basically. Because it's like on one end, you want to have room for people to be able to like learn. And it's like nobody knows everything. I mean, pe- some people, like for example, I had a picture um, of myself cosplaying as Jubilee with three other black young ladies, um, Kai Esh, Beautiful Disaster, and, um, and, and Jay Cosplay, Hey Jay Cosplay. And it went viral, you know, just the picture on its own. And then a friend of mine wound up making a meme out of it saying that, you know, oh, you say that black girl nerds don't exist, but maybe not the ones that you're cool with. And then that meme, wound up going viral again like a few months later because some group you know some black nerd group or black pop culture group or whatever shared it and started like basically saying that we were doing it for clout or for like we got we were we were accused of being paid models so i was a paid model uh even though i coughed up god knows how many amounts of hundreds of dollars to go to dragon con i was a paid model um so you know just stuff like that you know there's a fine line between that level of gatekeeping versus 
you know, realizing when it is being exploited and, you know, you see Geico at the comic convention or whatever. Um, and it's like, no shade to Geico. I know we all got to get our sponsorship from somewhere, but, um, you know, just that fine line of um, honoring the individual and kind of like, you know, saying hell no to the, to the bullshit. <laughs> just let yeah. Geico know um, we will take your sponsorship money. We will take your sponsorship, <laughs> but you can't be taking over all. I will. I will take your money, and also, I'm pretty sure they were there at that con because they know we'd be out there drinking. So they're like, "All right, y'all gonna fuck your cars up." So, right? Don't you sign up for some insurance real quick? Right. It's the same thing with like hip hop. You know what I mean? Where it's like yeah. it's, it's, it's one. It's one thing for you. You know, you remember discovering it. You remember uh, listening to it, enjoying it, talking about it with your friends then it gets like commercialized because like, you know, that's the society we live in. And mm -hmm. when you see people, when, once that happens then you start getting like intruders and like kind of like posers and it, everything kind of sucks when it becomes like super mainstream, you know what I mean? Right, right. Especially yeah. if you fell in love with it when it was still like sort of a, 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 a niche, like personal thing for yourself. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of like the important thing that we're tasked to do is like as it grows is maintaining the integrity if you, if you will of the culture you know so but then it's weird you have to walk the fine line of like maintaining the integrity but then also participating in like the uh expansion of it by yeah. showing that we're you know people with with our faces are out there like on the front lines getting it popping having fun having parties having our own conventions and shit like that like so it's like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because like we are growing it out and, and, and spreading it out. All that's going to mean is maybe like, you know, more black movies, more black comic books. And then again, it gets, and then it'll get watered down again. It's just, it's a whole thing, but that's why the product matters. So, so what are some of the cons that you frequent? I, I only do just because like my schedule and I, I have kids, like I, I try to make a big, big deal out of going to like Baltimore Comic Con, um, just because it's like it's kind of a tradition we've been doing for a long time. I, I remember going there back when it was like maybe one or two people walking around doing cosplay. It was a very low key event. I think the first one I went to was in 2000, maybe 13, and it might have been like the maybe the second or third one, and right. watching, it, watching it grow into what it is. So, like, that's that's been fun. I don't really like you know, big crowds like that. I love, I love the culture, but I've, I've tried to make that one a big deal. Um, I also go to New York Comic Con because I, it's always on a Thursday, Friday, and I'm always in New York on a Thursday, Friday. And so I'll, I'll do Thursday, Friday, and then come to Baltimore, come to Baltimore, uh, like Friday night and, you know, be with my, my kids and family and all that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but th those are the ones I love the most. As far as like the other stuff, Dragon Con, Otacon, I haven't really gotten a around to it. Mm. Okay. So have you ever considered maybe applying that to like your workflow as far as getting more in depth? Because you like you were saying, you're doing shows where you're doing like deep dives into a uh, certain like subculture. So have you ever thought about like doing that with the con scene? Yeah, I, I, I did. It's just the scheduling, like logistically it's dip more difficult than, than right. it would seem. But like, yeah, I, I, I thought of a, I, I was working on a show like a year ago and it was actually called Con Men where it would be like two dudes who go to like every con that they can and mm -hmm. sort of like dive into like what the what the vibe is like. Oh, here's a here's a uh, a shameless plug on on Facebook on Complex's Facebook channel. There's a show called uh, Fan Fatale mm -hmm. and it's a playoff. It's a playoff Femme Fatale that I, I helped develop and it's um it's a show about like geek culture, but sort of what like like what a female through through like a female lens on the complex brand so it's like a female geek culture complex show it's on facebook and it's called fan fatale it's uh it's it's pretty dope okay Tight. Tight. cool put that on a list to look up um, yeah definitely definitely want to support women oh, the, the king hope the king wants to speak oh shut up we must let our king speak <laughs> whatever so you got like a ton of titles uh under your belt writer, producer, director, uh, showrunner, you, you name it. So which one would you say is like your favorite and least favorite to do? Uh, writer is probably favorite because that's a lot of time. Uh, 
you know, sitting and, and, and writing and like uh, brainstorming, coming up with like fun things. Uh, least favorite is probably um, uh, show, show running involves a lot more logistics. It's not like as fun. Anything that sometimes the things with logistics are like the worst, making sure that like the graphics uh, department is talking to you know, the studio to make sure that like the name pops up, uh, you know, the lower third pops up correctly and anything that involves like little like minutia like that, I, I can't stand. And usually sometimes they reward you with that. Like that sometimes comes with like a cooler title, like, oh, you'll be the senior producer or you'll be the supervising producer of the show. And it's like, that sounds dope, you know, cause it, it you know, but like, it's not, it's not fun at all. So anything that has to do with like logistics and, um, you know, crunching little pieces of data is not fun, but like writing, writing is always like the, the best time for sure. Okay. Um, so did you happen to, to see uh, <clears throat> Justice League Dark? Uh, oh my God. <laughs> the new Justice League Dark, uh, what was it? Apocalypse War? Nah, man. I, I, I wish. I, I, was, I have it. It's bad. No, 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 because my question for you was, I was trying to see if you can come up with a better, uh, uh, there's a scene with Harley Quinn and... and uh, don't tell him. Yeah, don't, you're not going to spoil I, it. It's, 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 it's not, I'm not spoiling it. Okay, okay. But yeah, there's a scene with uh, Harley Quinn and Lois Lane. So once you get there and you've seen that scene, I wanted to see if you could like write a, a better scene for that. <laughs> You know what I'll do? I'll watch it this weekend, and then um, I don't know how long it takes you to put these up, but like, I'll I'll, t I'll email it to you, and you can include it in like the description of the episode. Right. Cool. Also, like how about this? How about this? How about you watch the whole movie and pull <laughs> and plug all the plot holes all over that goddamn movie? <laughs> do that. That's a, that's what I've heard the most. Yeah, it's it's quite a yeah. thing. Thank we, you. We want to hear your take on that because. Yeah, our last episode was something plot else. holes. Where did, you, where did you see it at? It's on. It's on Amazon or what? Uh, oh, we stole it know. from the internet. It's okay. All right, well, somebody email it to me. Then. Oh yeah, right, no, I got you, go. you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> we don't. We don't pay for shit here. We're, we're yeah, no, yeah. yeah I'm, this I'm podcast don't got no money. Because oh, yeah. I'm a good Samaritan. Yeah. I paid for it. Right yeah, until I'm they start paying us life. for uh for plugging, then we'll Oh my gosh. Then... Yeah, so we are not then, then we'll start like, going legit. <laughs> I already know we're not getting any DC comic sponsorship. No. Well, you can that. definitely Plus. not. That's why, you Disney Plus. All Disney. we'll need is Disney Plus. Wow. <laughs> that, will, that will be the one and only sponsorship we need. <laughs> All right. So I guess we could probably just dive into our uh, main topic. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, Wait, can so, you give me can you give me like ten seconds? Oh yeah, yeah. Take your time. And now a commercial break and a word from our sponsors. Nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> oh my god. Well, our sponsors are a bunch of niggas. It's us. It's true. Host of Everybody Gets One. It's true. We got this nigga down here, Rio. We got this. No, 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 no. He's half. Okay, we got this. Nig all over here, Rio. He's, he's, got, a, he's a nig. There's no gun. He's a nig. Oh, okay. We have okay. Our sponsorship is over. I guess our one sponsor was yes, Rio Griffin, the lone yes. nigga. The lone. <laughs> Who's the lone man? Yeah. Okay. Jesus. So pretty much our main topic Man's of the our day. Our motherland. Who's our motherland? Nigga. Oh right, uh, my God. <laughs> and then, uh, and moving on to our main topic. Alex, I hope you got some good questions to follow up. Oh, with. no, 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 no. Here's what's going to happen. This is Alex. Alex is a good listener. We're going to we're going to figure out some some things that uh, Mr. Torres likes. So, um, OK, so the main topic is all right. Pretty much. We already seen what Marvel and DC has come out in this cinematic universe. All right. First thing I want to know. How do you grade each cinematic universe? How well do you think each cinematic universe did? Also, then tell me where they fucked up and what they did right. Oh, okay. Actually, tell I'll me what they did right first and then tell me what they fucked up last. Yes. I love the fucked up shit. So. And you know what? This is great because we get to pick the brain of a writer. So I, I'll so. tell you, um, I think, all right, we'll start with Marvel because they have like the, the, the longer history um, of film-wise. I think that... Um, I would I would grade it up. 
I would have to say an A. Like I was gonna say B plus to try to like, but it's it's for for a series of films that vast that covers that much ground and done and and buttoned up that tight. There's not really a lot to argue or debate about when it comes to Marvel. They did the brilliant thing of like starting with Iron Man, giving you the the you know the the tag scene at the end, the post credit scene, sort of teeing everything up. And even leaving themselves enough of an out where it's like, if it didn't work, it would have just been like, kind of like a cool little thing, right? But luckily it, it did work. They gave you, by the time we got to Avengers, we, we had uh, we had an Iron Man movie. We had a Thor movie. We had a Captain America movie. We had a Hulk movie. Um, and an Iron Man too, as well. Yeah. So right. and, and, and so like these, these characters are so well developed and fleshed out that like by, by virtue of like how well that did it, it only shines a light on how poorly dc managed that same execution because they tried to crowbar the entire justice league into one film it left really no room for development like one minute you're you're you know you're in gotham and then aquaman's there it's like what, what is like it, it was no it was it was it didn't give them any opportunity to tell like a really good story or to have any real character development or for you to care about them like they were all just a a uh just like a, a a pile of like oh sorry they're all just like yeah no, we there good. Was a pile, you're good a pile of trash that he was, was just talking about <laughs> it was all just like a um it was all just like a, a catchphrase in a costume like it just wasn't it, it, I wasn't like invested in any of it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wow, yeah. I love that. A catchphrase and a costume. I'm gonna have to use yeah. that one. Remember the thing he says like, oh, what's he goes, what's your superpower? Oh, I'm rich. It's like that's cool. I'm like, yeah, if, nigga, we heard that 50 times. We yeah, know the that movie already. the movie just ends up being like sort of like a um a like kind of like a long trailer, you know? Just yeah. Like Thank you. Thank you. It, Batman it versus like, Superman, especially <laughs> Batman versus Superman. I kept telling people this. People kept trying to tell me, oh, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, nigga, Dude, that movie Batman, Batman versus Superman was a cut of two and a half different movies. <laughs> it was literally a trailer. You can tell where, oh, we just cut this snippet, cut this snippet. That's for another movie. That's not for any Batman versus... This makes no sense whatsoever. Even even the even the fact that they 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 fucked up and showed you doomsday in the trailer yeah i'm like what the f it's like out of like you already got batman and superman in it you're gonna show me um wonder woman and yeah. you're gonna show me doomsday in the damn trailer like you show off wonder woman and doomsday I, you just showed me the movie and, thank and it, you and it reeked of desperation because they they knew before they even put it out they're putting out a bad product you know what i mean so it's like we gotta make sure people come see this and it's like uh, really it's like corporate like meddling you know what i mean because like those properties are coming from behind and they're so big that they 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 can't fail so they do too much whereas like iron man who gives a shit about iron man he wasn't like popping like that at the yeah. time like, c-list yeah, c-list at max sure c -list. so they're like do whatever you want to do they 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 hit the lottery by getting like one of the best actors ever who's coming off of like one of the most embarrassing times almost ended his own career if you remember like that was back when he was he was waking up in somebody's house high off of like black tar heroin he had one foot out the door in hollywood he was hold like up radio hold actor. up hold up hold up what the hell is black tar heroin god <laughs> damn know. that's what i said i was like damn like what is what even <laughs> I gotta is google this shit what the hell is that <laughs> yeah yeah be careful if you google it too many times you end up on a list oh shit. yeah okay never you, mind and you know robert downey jr was on he got fired from uh the show i don't know if you guys are old enough to remember this show but there was a show on fox called ally mcbeal yep. yes yeah I, and, I know that show and he was he was like a love interest on that show and he got fired from that show Rio, like, that's how bad he was he was Rio. a disaster so luckily the stars aligned for for you know he got a shot at it um you know jason favreau is a great director uh um they, they put together something really cool and um it's it set it's set up that universe perfectly where it's like it can be sort of it could feel not too fantastic but but you know it, it's 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 still like you know physics don't really matter here you know what i mean like you can't you can't you can't fly with those things on your feet like that's absurd but but you know what i mean like you could suspend disbelief enough so right yeah it was still good 
You could really just look at everything that Marvel did and then see how DC did it wrong, honestly. Quick question. <laughs> quick question before we continue. Mm-hmm. Um, how old are you, Rio? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> he said, do we know Ally McBeal? Like, I know Ally McBeal. We all know Ally McBeal. Okay, all right. I'm so how old do you sure. think you are? I, I, didn't, I didn't know whether you guys were like, you know, still... Watching Power Rangers or something. I don't know. <laughs> you weren't watching Power Rangers when Ally McBeal was out? I was watching like Frasier and shit like that. I was kind of like. Oh, nigga, you old. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of <laughs> a little bit like far. <laughs> you watching Frasier. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, Frasier, you know. Stop it. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Pre- prequel and sequels. <laughs> okay. Oh so we've established that the DC comic book universe is trash. Are, do, are we all in the greens here? Yes. I think we were in greens trash. before this, but it's yeah. Just so, yes. It's just so, yes. ru- it's just so rushed. Like, it, like, look. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it it is. rushed for absolutely no reason. It's a shame because it's like, it's, you know, it's like when you fall in love with potential. <laughs> That's exactly what DC is. Like, oh, if you just tried a little harder, you could be so perfect, but I got to cut you off because you just refuse to be great. (laughs) And see, the thing is, I saw the potential in the DC universe because they went for a darker tone. You know, Marvel went for the more, I don't want to say happy-go-lucky, but, you know, they were cracking a lot of jokes, you know, in the middle of firefights, which doesn't happen when you're in the middle of a firefight, but it was funny. So, you know, you let that slide and, you know, they wanted to go a little darker, even with Superman. I know a lot of people hated uh, Man of Steel and all this other crap, which is crazy because Man of Steel actually made sense to me. It was like, all right, if I'm an alien, I have to learn to control myself. I have to learn to be Superman. You know, you can't just say I'm a paragon for truth and justice movie one. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You know, you just came out of that. So I I like that. So I like that direction they were going. And it felt more like a alien invasion movie when Zod came like it it had a different feeling than a Superman movie which was great to me but then it just went Man of Steel then down into the trash yeah, I agree and then you got Wonder Woman and then back down into the trash yeah and then I, they, I just gave up the, really they, they were on fire with the um you know the Dark Knight trilogy well yeah. the first two oh yeah the oh yeah for Nolan movies yeah yeah, like those were good ass movies. Like, and that's... sadly, they're not canon. So, but it's so yeah, but... ironic. Like, they do their best with the. It's like the one superhero they got right is the motherfucker who ain't got no fucking powers. Like, <laughs> because Batman is the best character in DC <laughs> Comics. That's another thing, Jason. <sighs> How do you feel about Batman? Because these two right here, CC and Rio, they hate on Batman like shit. I like Batman. Thank it's you. Dep- All right, so now it's three to two. But here's the thing: like, I don't know how could what, what's I, I could see why somebody wouldn't like him though, because I don't like Superman. For I think I don't like Superman things. either. Um, but but like um, I don't know what, what's what's you what's your These, problem? Yeah, what's your reasoning? Yeah, Batman, you two. Batman is fine. Just, no, no, <laughs> go back to finish, what you were saying. Let me finish. Let me finish. Keep that same Batman energy. It's fine. He's just as cool as white privilege gets. Now, <laughs> he, this man, we're talking about a man who, albeit every hero has their like tragic story or whatever, tragic origin story that propels them to like do what they do, right? But he is like, this man like has all, exerts all of the like problematic behaviors <laughs> of someone who needs a, like serious therapy He's like pretty much consumed in it. He treats his sidekicks like shit. um, And he like convinces himself that he's a good guy. Like he, you're somehow better. And that's why the Joker fucks with him so much because the Joker be like, yo, you always be sitting here trying to tell yourself that you're the hero and that you're somehow like better than me. But like, look at how you carry yourself. Like nigga, you just like me. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like, but you know i understand it and i get it it's one of those things where it's like i understand why you do what you do and why you are the way you are but it doesn't justify you behaving that way and treating other people that way so that's kind of like my thing with that man okay rio go ahead 
All right, so I'm not going to just go on Batman. I'm going to go. No, 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 no. I'm going to go on DC characters in general, like I already explained to you guys before. I just need to make a YouTube video of me telling everybody why DC <laughs> yes, on a it, whole is trash. Make it for the um <laughs> make it for the for the podcast um YouTube channel. Make it. Okay, so you just want me to speak on Batman then. Speak on Batman. Batman so make is sure the to most put up a disclaimer first, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this, Batman this is just you. <laughs> is the most unrealistic superhero that you could possibly create. Fact. Why? Why? Because white billionaires don't become superheroes who want to help poor people. Exactly. So. <laughs> and, That's your reasoning? And, and, and you guys, the thing that you guys ride on the hardest that annoys me to no end is his contingency plan crap. No, it's not. That's not what it I ride is on. It's so ridiculous. Superman can hear you from any place on the planet. Wonder Woman is faster, stronger, can fly. The Flash is faster than anything, <laughs> apparently. Aquaman doesn't even have to get on land to beat you. If Batman could beat Aquaman underwater, that is complete horseshit. Aquaman's useless at that point. He's getting beat by a regular-ass dude in basically the, sp- the space where he is supposed to be unbeatable. If you can be beaten in the space that you are unbeatable, you're trash. <laughs> so like they just write Batman to the point where he is just so OP for a regular ass person it's ridiculous Alex I guarantee you could walk up to Elon Musk and punch him right in his jaw and he would probably fall on the ground okay that's Batman that's Lex Luthor like, th- like he's not beating Superman he's not beating any of the people that he runs with it's impossible Batman is not beating anybody other than the fucking little lose the crackheads in Gotham that he fights on the regular. Those are the only people he's beating. Like, the Justice League, everybody on the Justice League should be able to whoop him with the ease. Okay. The ease. I don't care about contingency plans. Number one. That's trash. Okay. Number one is not about contingency plans. You keep going to one comic book. There's only one story where that happens. Okay, that's number one. You, you're writing on one book, and you're 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 just trickling it down to everything about Batman. That's number one. <laughs> all right, all right. Number two, okay. You say, oh yeah, Superman can hear everything, and you know why Superman is trash? Because he chooses not to use that power to hear everything. He makes the choice to say, oh, I I shouldn't be using my powers. You know, remember he holds back everything he does everything in every form of fashion. He doesn't spy on people around the world. He's done it before in Man of Steel when he went off into space and he could just hear everyone's cries and problems. But he also realized it's not my job. I can't save everyone. I'm supposed to lead them to show them to stand up for themselves. That's what Superman is for. He is a paragon of truth and justice and bullshit. He's not, not going to leave it on all the time. I mean, exactly. He's, he's going to get gonna a massive there. headache all the time. Keep well, he's Superman. That. He's probably not going to get a massive headache. It's just that it's, it's annoying to hear, oh, crap, my cat is in a tree. Ah, my building's on fire. Or people Oh, fucking. my God. Or people or, fucking. Samuel, that's not a problem. Well, clearly, <laughs> that's a positivity. Gloves are off, so feel free to jump in at any point. There's no way you can be rude at this point. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I, I've, I took the lid off, so now it's just yeah, because he just <laughs> hates DC in general. So yeah, yeah. but at, at, at the end of the day, remember, most of these, if not all of the, the Justice League members, are still afraid of Batman. All of them, which he's is crazy. He's psycho. Why wouldn't? Uh, yeah, he's, he's a psychopath. Really unstable. Don't y'all understand? This is the whole point of Batman. This is and the because whole point of that, of they respect him too. So. That's all the people that. who have written all these characters, right? They've all written their characters with weaknesses. Then. You have to have somebody who can foil them. They're not going to have the villain have the ultimate plan to foil them. It's actually quite creative to have someone in your own camp able to foil you. It's better than just having a typical villain because, of course, you expect, oh, the villain is going to do A, the villain is going to do B, the villain is going to do C. That's boring. If you have someone in your own camp, you don't think that's boring? If you see that over and over again, to see good guy versus bad guy, the end. 
isn't boring to you? You don't like seeing a twist in your stories at all? Have you have you ever heard of the character Doctor Doom? This is he how I know he constantly gets out of it. This is how trouble. I know he's in the this is how I know he's in the military. This guy is straight here for the truth and justice in the American way. He only cares about a straightforward story where the good guy wins and the bad guy dies. He doesn't want anything extra in his stories. I know we that Batman. So I want to Jason. Yeah, yeah, Jason, explain why you like Batman. <laughs> I, I like him for the same reasons y'all said y'all don't like him, which is funny. Like exactly, it, like that's kind of like what's cool about him. Like everybody else has very like well defined powers, mm. and aside from like the the money, like he he's a physical man. Like he's limited by his own physical body. Mm. Um, he's the best version of himself. He's not just some dude. He's not Elon Musk. He's from you know he's trained with the League of Shadows. That's so he's at least a super ninja. You know what I mean? Like he's not he's not just a billionaire. And so um like um I all the other shit is like funny memes, like treating his sidekicks like shit, yeah. the white privilege. Like I saw two memes like in the last couple of days. One was like um bat did you see the meme floating around where it's like why bat why the mouth part is cut out of Batman's uh mask? Oh yeah, so you can tell he's white. Yeah, so so police, so police, oh my god, tell, so police can tell so police don't white. shoot him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then there was another one. I saw another meme, or maybe it was a tweet that was like, you know, with his money, like Batman could do more for Gotham if he like opened up like programs around the city yeah. rather than just like. But still, like, all right, now it's like if if we're gonna do that, you got to do that for every hero and every, every comic book. Like it's it's funny to do it because billionaires suck you know what i mean so it's like they're they're shitty and and honestly that's the the thing that's like kind of the, the weirdest thing about batman right now is like when we live in a world where like billionaires are all shitheads like even there was a movie with ryan um what's the guy's name who played deadpool ryan, ryan reynolds, reynolds. Ryan did, you, did you see that movie where, where he's a billionaire but he he's part of some secret society of like, oh yeah um fuck it was on netflix yeah it's on netflix but that like completely tanked. It was like a piece of shit. People don't want to see that. They don't want to see redeemable billionaires. Like it's gro it's grotesque, right? But like, I think we, we can all relate to revenge, right? They killed his parents. We can all re that's that's classic kung fu shit. All, speaking of kung fu, he's he's a, a super ninja. It, this is this is all the shit black people grew up with. This is Wu Tang. This is the Last Dragon. It's revenge. You killed my teacher. You killed my parents. You killed whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. he got money he's fly as fuck he, he pulls up in the best whip all the drip right <laughs> right and but, then it's like he's he's got all the gadgets he's always got a plan you know what i mean yeah. and and um his rogues gallery is sick and it's not like he's just walking through people it's oh he always like just makes it even if you look at the shitty 1960s show his f feet is always this close to the lava and the show ends, and then they're like, Tune in. is he going to get out? Tune in next week. And then the next week, he's back up there. So there's elements of Batman, like, in terms of, like, when, when it comes to, like, a storytelling that mm -hmm. are, are dope and very relatable, I agree with all the memes. Billionaires are corny. He's not a good father figure. Children <laughs> have died under his care. And by the way, who is building all that shit? Is, is he killing the contractors? You know how many contractors you need to build that Batcave? Yeah. The trap doors and shit? Where are all those people? Uh -huh. I, he's, they're probably he dead. Kills, he kills them. He, you have to. to. Exactly. So yes, he's a bad person. He's a billionaire. He's a shitty father figure. Um, all of that. But it's so cool to see somebody with no powers punch Guy Gardner in the face, or yeah. pull, pull himself up out of something, or have some. Not just having like the shark repellent on deck. Like I thought of everything, but like when he when he really thinks of everything. Like when you read Hush, and right. like thank and, you, and, Here's and like my Hush book. Yeah, I yo, I fucking yo, I was I Rio was, was hating on Hush. I love that Hush story, and he Thank when, you. when he's in the sewer with with, Cat, with Killer Croc, you know, no, no, with, with with Catwoman and 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 Superman is oh yeah, him. bust down, yeah, 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 because yeah. uh because Poison Ivy has control of his mind, and he can only hide in the lead covered sewers where he hid a kryptonite ring just for this emergency. <laughs> that shit is dope. Talk about baby. That's what I'm talking about. Fucking Rio. That's what I'm, you know what? what I'm talking about. Me, um, I can't win with you guys, man. But You're you never going to win. In contrast, in contrast, that was kind of why I really, especially in the cinematic universe, appreciated um, Iron Man's character development because he was like, 
super problematic in the beginning, right? He was like alcoholic, you know, um, he was kind of like semi dog in his uh, personal assistant or whatever. Um, Am I? <laughs> and, you know, so there was kind of like seeing him go from that to going from like functional fuck boy to like the guy who is responsible for saving the universe, I think was really cool. He and, wasn't really responsible for saving the universe. Well, he, he helped. And, and he helped reluctantly. So yes. he was still he was, an he was, asshole. He was, he was, he was still a dick. Did you be reluctant to die? Not when a fucking alien just wiped Nick. out half the planet. What what else do I have to lose? Well, you're talking about you're talking about the first Avengers. Endgame. Where, oh, Endgame. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you yeah. don't have what, what do you have left? Half the planet is gone. You have nothing to lose. Yeah, the Hulk is the one who brought everybody back. Tony is the one who stopped Thanos' army and, and, from and, from from sacking the Earth. Right. <laughs> but also speaking to like how much of a dick he is, that that was kind of self serving because he didn't have to do that. He could have gave the the gauntlet to uh captain marvel don't you think yeah easily yeah i don't know why i'm like y'all do know y'all have like the most powerful woman in the universe yeah like he's right there the, the last thing he did on earth was an act of like uh it was self it was selfishness not not quite selfishness but like um like it was it was like arrogant like it was you know it it, it was like i i saved y'all you know yeah. I, I, I am Iron Man. That was his last words. Yeah. Well, remember when he first said, I am Iron Man, he did it out of arrogance. He was like, can't nobody touch me. I am Iron Man. And so he did it again. He was like, <laughs> hold, right. on, hold up, Thanos. You're not about to get this. You ain't getting this W. I am Iron Man. Bitch. And he snapped him away. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, That was the movie, awesome. The movie scene, theater, Don't get me wrong. Now, that scene was amazing. Went, went off when, when that happened. Yeah, and I kind of interpreted that scene a little differently because he was the most reluctant to take on the mission in the in, in end game. So it was kind of like the irony that he was the one who was least about it. And then once he finally jumped on board, he was the one that had, well, one of the ones that had to die. So, you know, that was kind of like how I looked at it. For me, Captain Griffin, I mean, uh, Captain America was uh, <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mess with you, Ray. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go, so, go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I just to, uh, drop you. You about to hate on Captain America? Huh? No, I like Captain America. Oh, so so Jason, what in contrast with Marvel? What do you think? Uh, what do you think DC could have done better to to uh, create and evolve their uh, cinematic universe? Um, hire the teams that make their animated movies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Like, we all, all agree on that. Wow. We all agree on Thank that. You. All yes. their cartoons are way better than their movies. Way better. And, and again, like just, just, um, you know the the way that like you know for Marvel they had like the What If series, right? And it was a big mm -hmm. deal. That's where all their sort of like um, out of the box things live. But DC has Elseworlds for like years, and they've had like many many parallel worlds. And so, like, they should lean into that, right? Like, you have a joke, a standalone Joker movie that doesn't need a Batman. You could imply it. They had the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. They they don't need the the their biggest L was trying to emulate. You know what I mean? We touched on that, but like, they should have just had a movie where it's like a straight up detective Batman movie, like a uh, origin, a, a completely different type of uh you know, uh, Superman story. Like, they were already kind of going there. They didn't have to... Incorporate sure, everybody else. Yeah. yeah, they didn't have to do that. That's where they fucked up. And if they would have just made cool individual movies with these established characters that everyone already knows, right. like, the pay, the payoff of, like... They already blew it. With, like, the, the payoff of the Avengers was you watched so many movies before you got to see that. Mm -hmm. So to just try to cram everybody together is like, it's anti-climatic because there's no build, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like what they, that's where they fucked up. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have done that. And they should have, they should have continued to make like cool standalone stories. I wasn't a huge fan of the Joker. I thought it was way too long. Uh, I've not even thought about watching it again. I saw it once. I was like, I don't need to see this again. Um, I really didn't, I didn't like uh, uh, Suicide Squad, but for some weird reason, I've seen it like three times. Yikes. I, saw it, I, saw I feel it sorry for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I kept, I, I saw it when it came out, and then I was with someone who wanted to watch it on DVD. I don't know why, but 
um, it's it's that's another movie that's just a, a good ass trailer. Like, there's a lot of cool moments. I think we all thought it was gonna be dope when the trailer came out, mm-hmm. unless you unless you were really up on the fact that like there was a shit ton of reshoots and the movie was a behind the scenes already a disaster. Right. But, um, yeah, like that's that's the that's the only thing they could have done right. Have you guys heard anything about the Spawn movie, by the way? Yeah, they're rebooting that. Um, I, I uh, heard Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Jamie Fox, yeah. I, I heard that the vibe is going to be like it's a horror movie. Yeah. From the perspective of like the, the villain and the, the you know, the, the bad people in the movie are sort of like the people that like Jason just knocks off or Freddy. Like that's like a dope take. Ooh, right? I like Cause that. Because he's, he's horrifying. You know what I mean? Right. So like, like that's dope. Do shit like that. Like ha- do an Elseworlds thing. Do a thing where... You know what if uh, all, all the all the cartoons are are up for grabs? You know what? Either that or like the TV shows. Like those shows are campy and fun as shit. Like mm-hmm. the, the uh, Flash is fun. Black Lightning is fun. Um, mm-hmm. Legends of Tomorrow are fun. They're all cheesy, but they are all fun. Like mm-hmm. either have fun or or um, have individual stories because like Batman and Superman was like a joyless just sludge fest like it was nasty awesome. yeah i was yeah. like there's no there's no fun in this and it's not it's not fun yeah and i think that's something that marvel has managed to like merge really well is staying true to the comic book origins but still making it entertaining and enjoyable to watch um you kind of sparked another question so, um because we talked about this in our last conversation and how, and um, you just brought it up and like, why aren't these people hiring the, the um, writers for the animated series in DC Universe to do the live action? And there was speculation that there might be some sort of uh, stigma to um, moving writers in anime or anyone who works in production on animated um, works to live action. Do you feel like that's the case or? Maybe. I haven't really dug into it. I, I know when you, animated projects definitely make less. Like right, if you write on a cartoon, it's like half of what you make on a TV show. So like maybe they're thinking that they're digging out of a different pool of talent. Um, I don't know. They seem to always have like dope ass like voice actors. So yeah. I don't know. Like even like that that Harley Quinn cartoon on, on, on the sci-fi channel is dope. Like... Yeah. I, I, I like that show. Like, it's clearly, it's clearly a comedy. Like, I, 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 I suggested it to a friend of mine, and he was like, oh, this shit whack. Why is Bane like this? Why is Commissioner... I'm like, it's, a, it's just, it's one depiction. Everything is not going to be Christopher Nolan's Batman. Everything doesn't have to be, like, some dark, serious shit. I'm like, this is a silly, basically, like, sitcom version of what this world would be like. And then you got your Harley Quinn movie, and there's your other take on it. And if you don't like neither one of those, just read the comic book, you know? Right. I, I'm, I'm here for all different takes. You want to make a, com- like, even, Sh- yo, Shazam. I slept on Shazam the, until, literally until, like, maybe three weeks ago. I saw the trailer. I mm-hmm. said, it looks like shit. Even my kids said it looks like shit. They were like, we don't want to see that. I was like, me either. Damn, yeah, I when the kids on, get you. Right, and I threw, <laughs> I threw it on on the boredom, and by the end, I'm like, yo, this, this movie is fun. And that's what they've been lacking the whole time, which yeah. is why I think everything is going to turn around when the uh, the new Suicide Squad comes out because it has like the it's gonna have the energy of Guardians of the Galaxy because that's that's who's taking oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, James James, James Gunn James Gunn yeah yeah good stuff yeah so like the Marvel Universe basically has the palette of the Sam Raimi Sam Raimi Spider Man the original Spider Man trilogy if you really look at it they basically use that structure over and over and over again the color palette the uh, flow of the films with the mix of the seriousness with the comedy. Um, they make sure that they choose actors who can balance comedy as well as hold like a dramatic scene. Um, the one that they have failed with who doesn't have a comedic chop though is uh, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson. She has not nailed the like redeemable hero part of what all of their other heroes kind of have. Yeah. Um, would, so that's why I feel like that movie kind of, it, it, of course, it still made a billion dollars because yeah, Marvel's, Marvel's name just makes a billion dollars now. But uh, as far as like uh, uh, among the fandom, it's not high on the list of, of their, you know, hits. 
I thought it was fun. I thought it was fine. I knew I knew not to expect anything because I knew that other movies were coming that they they weren't really going to be able to address. Plus, it was kind of like a, uh, it was back in time, so I knew I knew it, it, there weren't going to be huge implications. The 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 coolest thing about it was the implication of um, that maybe they would go like a secret war. I mean, uh, uh, a secret, secret invasion, invasion. to yeah. go a secret invasion route. That would have been dope. Um, aside from that, there's been a bunch of L's really like daredevil was a piece of shit. Electro was awful. Um, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man three wasn't that good. Like it wasn't yeah, trash. That good. It was trash. I know. But like, but at, to me uh, up until, until dark, uh, night came out, I was like, Spider-Man two is the best comic book movie I've ever seen in my life. Like that Dr. Octopus Spider-Man. Movie, oh yeah. yeah. Oh my that God. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was time. beautiful. That was beautiful. But, but speaking to what you mentioned about like, um, Marvel's palette. Do you guys? I, I I'm curious what you think. Like, do you think it's because the actual characters, right? Because like Spider-Man is funny and witty it, since day one. He's a kid. He's always had some sort of wisecrack that has comedy baked into it, right? Superman's like a brooding. You know, he lives in a cave. He's he doesn't really have a per, you know any any sort of like humor. And then Superman is just like a Boy Scout who's literally an alien. Like, like, are, are they but are, do they are is it because of like the writing and directing or do you think it's because like the characters lend themselves to being good like movie heroes i think it's the characters but the thing is like it's 2020 we have the ability to think a lot more clever in coming up with these stories when it comes to like superman and batman and all this other crap like when i was talking about man of steel Man of Steel took a different take on Superman because everyone expects Superman to be already a paragon of truth and justice and bullshit, right? But if you take him out of that, just make him, all right, he finds out he's an alien kid. He has to find a way to get along in life. And I like how they told that story. Like, he knows that he can hurt you right now as a kid, but his uncle's like, yo, well, his dad is like, yo, you know, you got to learn to control yourself and don't hurt this kid. So you see him squeeze the fence instead of squeezing this kid's neck off. Then, well, I thought this part was dumb, though, letting your dad die in a tornado. Yes, I was just about to mention that. That part does not make any sense. Like, that's when, <laughs> that's when I think they could have done something different and broke the rule, and he could have been like, yo, I'm not going to sit there and let my dad die. Go save him. Then have him try to try to explain that away or something. You know, like, there's clever ways they could have came up with this. But for the most part, Man of Steel did a good job. But then when they tried to literally carbon copy everything that Marvel was doing, it's where they fell off to me. But you are right. Like the base characters, they're so stuck in their ways. Superman, Paragon of Bullshit. Batman, brooding guy in a cave. Aquaman, trash. Flash, you know. <laughs> fast, he's Flash just, fa is, no, he just Flash fast is a, trash. Flash is um, the only one that, like there's some there you, you can kind of play around with his personality. Yeah, you can play around with him. Like he Everyone has a, else is a witty. Stoic. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else is just stuck in their ways. But, well, but, no, but because... Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman did good though. Yes. Wonder yes. Woman That's what to I was me, say. Wonder Woman killed uh Captain Marvel. I will watch Wonder Woman yes. five times over before I watch Captain Marvel again. Except I agree. that ending though. That ending was trash. Well, no, you're talking about yeah, the, yeah, the final the battle. Ending. Yeah, yeah. I, I could have skipped that though. I don't care about that. Like, but as far as watching one, if you gave me both of them, I'm watching uh, uh, Wonder Woman a million times over, over and well, over that's again. Because, like you said, Wonder Woman, they didn't try because it was like they couldn't try to be Marvel because Captain Marvel wasn't out yet, number one. And it was like they honored the origin, like her origins in the Themyscira and, um, you know, like the original comic story. So that's why it did so well. And it's just like what you said earlier, Jason Torres, like when you try to do what you think other people will like, it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Being your authentic self and being true to the origins of who you are and why people did like you so much. So, you know, that's my soapbox. <laughs> that is my soapbox. So any last words from you all while we... As we adjourn. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I think I'm good. Okay, good, good. Glad you all have had your. Al Alex, that's I it. Some, um, 
drop. DC's trash. Um, <laughs> nigga, nigga, nigga. Um, I'm done. Oh, no, I've got something. You still haven't answered uh, the question that I told you I was going to ask you at the beginning. What? Favorite comic book character, movie, oh. or, uh, hero or villain, just one from Marvel and from DC. Oh, yeah, that's for you, Torres. Oh, one, one hero, one villain from each? No, or you just, yeah, if you can do that, let's do that. Let's see. All right, I think my favorite hero is probably spider-man because that was like my my entry into comics like that's the first thing that i read and um it, so it's per, it's personal for that you can definitely argue that he's not the best but like he's he's one of my favorites he's one that i keep going back to um the oliver reed tangled web that shit is dope um and uh favorite villain in in uh marvel would have to probably be like dr doom dr doom is awesome um I love any of the stories that he's involved in that are that are written well. Um, for the DC, Battle World one, the Battle World one when yeah, he yeah. became God. Oh my, yeah. Ooh, that's fire! Yeah. Um, I I also love Deadpool too. Like I find myself like because I got because I don't have time to, to like go to the to the comic store as much as I used to. I read a lot of one offs, like books that don't really you don't really need a lot of continuity. Mm-hmm. And um, Deadpool has a lot of the best ones. Like like. The the one where where Deadpool is fighting um, uh, Bullseye, who's disguised as Hawkeye because it's like Dark Avengers, is mm. mad fun. If you haven't if you haven't uh, read that, you should read it. It's Deadpool versus Hawkeye, but it's not Hawkeye. It's 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 Bullseye dressed as Hawkeye. It's fucking mad fun. A lot of dope action. I like shit like that. But and then for for DC, I'm gonna say it, honestly, it probably is Batman is my favorite DC um, hero, and my favorite DC villain is, is gotta be like Lex Luthor. Like mm. his his bullshit is on another level. I, I, <laughs> facts, yo. He reminds me, especially um, well, I don't want to spoil nothing for you, but um, Lex Luthor has his moments where he reminds me very much of Loki. Oh yeah, he's great. Yo, he's the shit. I I I I, I like Luthor a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, quick question before you go. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do, man. Corn. That's that's the tangled web right there. That omnibus. Yeah, yeah, it's really fun. It, right. it 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 it's like it's 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 through the perspective of like the rogues gallery. So like you see what like Rhino does all day before. Spider-Man, you know, interrupts his bank robbery and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, that's tight. Okay, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely getting that. That's automatic. Nice. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really good. While you're reading that, just to ruin your day, you should also read One More Day. Ooh. The Spider-Man story, One More Day. You're going to hate yeah, it yeah, yeah. After, you, after you read that. <laughs> Is that the one where... Uh, Don't say he, it. He, he makes a deal with the devil. With, with Mephisto. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, that's awful. That's that's really it's, bad. Yeah, it's so bad. Is that, that when he I loses his, his, his to like he, he's not married to Mary Jane anymore? He makes that deal. Yes. Okay. It's really I'm not, bad. I'm not doing anything with that. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna make it. Just... Oh my gosh. Damn, this shit eighty six dollars. Oh my gosh. Just well, find it cheaper. That is too. No, there's a paperback for eleven ninety nine, but <laughs> it's hardcover. Jason, yeah, you're always one hardcover. Right. Exactly. You have been an absolute joy to have on this show. We definitely want to have you back on this show. Yeah, I, w- I had so much more stuff to talk about. I wanted to talk about Vision and the, the, the Tom King Vision book and all oh, kinds God. of shit. Like, so oh. I'll be back. So then, okay, now we, we can do a part two. We'll Next part week. two this. Yeah. 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 Holler at me anytime. Because we still got shows we got to put out. Oh, he could be part of the, uh, the Black Panther uh, discussion too. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, okay, well, then we'll make it the three part. Yeah. This definitely hey. will not be the last our fans see of Jason Torres, for sure. Oh, I'm excited to be, you know, be a part of everything. And, and it was a pleasure meeting all y'all. Y'all, y'all were really dope. And um, I, I look forward to seeing y'all um, in the future. Oh, and if anybody wants to holler at me, I'm JNTNY on Instagram and um, terriblejason.com on, is my website that has clips of shit that I've done. I got to update it. I have stuff that I need to put up there, but go to terriblejason.com and you can, you can find all my other stuff from there. See, he knows how to say all his socials and not be a salty motherfucker like Sam. (laughs) Rio. 
Go See? ahead. You, you yeah. did it again. Go ahead, Sam. And yes, go ahead, Rio. All right. So, everybody, you can follow us on uh, Oh, Facebook, look at them. Dudes are using enthusiasm now. Whatever. Look Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Everybody Gets Zero One. And Facebook, everybody, it's one O N E. No, it's it's zero one. Well, yeah, they could do zero one now. Oh, yeah, Facebook.com. Yeah, it'll still link to it. Yeah, it'll okay. still link to it. That's the URL. It's Facebook. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes things easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. don't forget to scri- subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ego Podcast. Yeah, um, we don't have a name yet. It's just a bunch of numbers. Because yeah. we don't have, so how about this? Subscribe to the YouTube channel yeah. so we can get an actual name, everyone. If we get up to, I think, more than 100 subscribers, we can change our yeah. name. Yeah, or 1,000 view. Well, I forgot how many view hours, like 10,000 view hours or some crap like that. So Either watch way. the videos or subscribe. Please. What is it on YouTube? What is it? Um, it's podcast. Ego uh, yeah. podcast. Type in everybody gets one. Well, if he types in, it, this. it'll be a lot of stuff that comes up. If he types in ego podcast, it'll come up. Yeah. Well, if he did, types I everybody did. gets one, you get Spider Man. So yeah, you get. Well, Spider-Man. I I I name most of the videos. I main I name most of the ver- videos. Everybody gets one episode. So put everybody gets one EP, and then our videos will come up on top of everything. Yeah, I did that on purpose. So or I could just send you. I'll send yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'll send them a link to it. I'll Actually, send you the link tree. Yeah, yeah, no, I follow on I follow on um, Instagram, but I, I okay. Don't, so the link the link tree is up there. Yeah, yeah the, the link tree is in the bio, and so you'll if, and you'll see links to YouTube and all that. If so, our, everybody wants to give their socials, yes, they they were Samuel. Yeah, you gotta go. All right, you can follow me at SF Design Twenty One on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See how happy he was about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to eat. <laughs> you can check out my work at on Instagram at Griffin underscore studios. And you can see all the naughty people that I follow on Twitter <laughs> at Rio underscore Griffin. Griffins? Griffin. Okay. Singular. Okay. <laughs> no, you go. Go, okay. Mr. Yeah, Prop. Everybody. Um, <laughs> you guys can follow me at Metro underscore Tom on Instagram and Metro underscore underscore tom on twitter but be warned of the twitter i suggest you stay away from it <laughs> i still you need to ahead, follow your twitter. twitter you don't want to follow that he has the only fans account oh my god nigga i know you're not talking plantain poppy all y'all got only fans accounts with the uh never mind because i've been sam's model before so i'm gonna shut up Mm. Um, <laughs> CC's feet, everybody hashtag cc's feet on this episode so you can follow yours truly at CC the Geek on Instagram and Facebook at CC the Greek Geek on Twitter and don't forget to follow HBCU Con on all platforms. Yay! Yay. Peace out. Peace. Hold on, let me say nigga one more time, nigga. Stop wow. it. That was twice. Okay, so that's <laughs> five times I said it this episode. <laughs> Yay! All right. Thanks. Jason. Cut the recording before I say something crazy. <laughs> the N-word counter. We need to have an N-word counter in the corner of the screen. No. Yeah.